This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. We're doing fine exchange risk management, and in the last lecture, uh, we had a quick look at how we deal with exchange rates in general, and I listed uh, the various methods of reducing transaction risk that you can be asked to deal with in the exam. And so now we'll start going through them one by one. Uh, the first one being forward contracts. Uh, and what a forward contract is, remember, we're worried, whatever today's spot rate is, the rate at which we convert money today, our worry is that if we're going to convert on a future date, that clearly exchange rates could have changed and therefore we're at risk. Well, a forward contract is a rate quoted today to apply on a fixed future date. So to make it completely certain, I hope, what I mean by that, look at the figures in example three. We're in the UK, and I said we're always in the UK here unless I say differently, but we're going to have to pay 200,000 in a month's time. We told what the spot rate is, dollar pound, uh, 1.4820 uh, to 1.4905. But the spot rate is today's rate for converting today. If we were converting today, we'd use today's spot rate, no problem. Our problem is that we're not going to be paying the money we don't need to convert until one month from now. And again, in a month's time, the rate might be better, it might be worse, the rate stands to change. And if we do nothing at all, we're at risk. It may end up costing less, it may end up costing more, but there's risk. I want to remove that risk. Well, it turns out they're also quoting a one month forward rate. And so in today's papers, in addition to spot, there's this one month forward quoted of 1.4910 to 1.4970. And what that is, is that if I take that forward rate, then I would be agreeing now that in one month's time, I have to convert 200,000 at that fixed rate. Obviously, the spot rate in a month's time could be anything, but that now becomes irrelevant. I've fixed the rate in one month's time if I've accepted this forward contract, in one month's time, we have to convert at that rate. The amount's fixed. And so how much uh, would it be fixed at in a month? Well, our conversion rules stay the same. Uh, in one month's time, uh, we're converting $200,000 into pounds. Uh, the exchange rates, same basis, it's so many dollars equals one pound. And so to convert, we'll divide by the relevant rate. And as to which rate, it's normal rules. Here, we're paying money, paying dollars, so we'd need to buy dollars. And since the quote, dollar was the first currency, we use the lower, we use the first rate. So the rate for buying dollars is 1.4910. And therefore, it will convert to uh, 134, 138. It's a payment. 
And again, we've agreed to that today. And therefore, in a month's time, we have to convert. This is fixed in one month. And so there's now no risk. Again, the actual spot in a month may be better, may be worse. It's irrelevant. We have to use this rate we've agreed, 1.4910, so there's no risk. Uh, except the downside is um, that having um, committed to it, I have to convert $200,000 in one month. And where I will have a problem is, suppose for some reason the amount changes, you know, and I only need 100,000 for some reason, well, I would still have to convert 200,000, even if it meant buying some dollars to be able to convert. And the other problem is the timing. If for some reason we end up needing to pay earlier or later than a month, well, if we need to pay earlier, Oh, we're in one month. If I want to pay earlier, we'll have to convert at spot when we pay it. And then in a month, I still have to buy $200,000 at that rate, which I don't need. I then I mean to convert it back. So it's great in the sense of um, fixing the amount. One, three, four can go in my budgets and so on. But it is limiting. It's a fixed amount on a fixed date. Uh, forward rates, um, if you go to the bank actually, the bank will give you a forward rate on any amount, in any currency, on any period. You, know, you can go to the bank and say, oh, I want a forward rate on 62,000 in six weeks' time, and they'll quote you one. And if you agree, it's then fixed. Uh, in the papers, they quote forward rates uh, for major currencies, generally for one month, two months, or three months. Uh, and in the exam, it's generally these one month, two month, three months that are quoted in the papers. Just one thing, though, about the quote. Almost certainly in the exam, when there are forward rates, almost certainly. He'll give you them, as I did in this question, you'll be told the spot, this to this, the forward, this to this, no problem. However, in the newspapers, they quote it slightly differently, and it has happened in the exam that it's quoted slightly differently. And to share to me, look at example four. We're going to receive $150,000 in three months time. And we're going to use the three month forward rate. We told the spot rate uh, 1.5326 to 1.5385 and of course there's no direct relevance because we're not converting now. We're going to use the forward rate but in the newspapers, instead of telling you the forward rate directly, they give it you as a difference from spot. And so when it says three months forward, the 0.62 and the 0.51 aren't the forward rate. They're the differences between today's spot and the forward rate, which is what we're after. But there are two tricks. Although the 0 0.62, 0 0.51 are the differences from spot, they're always quoted in units of the smaller currency. What I mean, the original quote, it's $1.5 to the pound. Well, the difference of 0.62 is the smaller currency, which is cents. So it's 0.62 cents is the difference, and 0.62 cents is 0 0.0062 dollars. That's what the C meant at the end. But it's always a smaller currency, apart in fact from yen, 
and the smaller currency in all the major currencies is one hundredth of the main currency. So similarly, point zero zero six two. The other one five one. It's point zero zero five one. So that's, if you like, one trick. Uh, exactly, they're always given in the same order. So the 6-2 goes with the 5 three, two, 6 and so on. And the other problem, though, is I said, that's the difference. The forward rate will be different from spot by that amount. But to get the forward rate, will we add or subtract? Well, that's what the other bit at the end, the PM, the PUM, stands for. If it says PUM at the end, that means premium. Now then, normally if I say something like premium, you tend to assume, oh, it increases it. Well, in fact, for reasons I will explain after, if the uh, forward rate, if the difference is quoted as a premium, we subtract the premium from the spot. Now, say, I'll tell you why after, but if I subtract, it means the actual three month forward rate uh, 1.5326 minus 0 0.062 is 1.5264. If I subtract uh, 51 from there, it's 1.5334. So there is the forward rate, the three month forward rate. And of course, we now carry on as we did in the previous one. Uh, this time we're receiving money. We're receiving dollars, we're converting to pounds. And the quote is dollars to the pound. So 150,000. We'll divide by the relevant rate. And which rate will we use? Well, since we're, it was receiving, yeah, we're receiving dollars. To convert to pounds, we'll be selling these dollars to get pounds. And the rate if we're selling dollars, the first currency, is the higher one, uh, 1 1.5334. And so the actual receipt, 150,000, Langer 1.5334, is 97822. Uh, that receipt is fixed in three months. Uh, no money changes hands today. All that happens today is you agree with the dealer, the bank, to go for the forward rate. But having agreed to accept the forward rate, we then sit and wait three months. In three months' time, we have to convert the $150,000 at that rate, and we're guaranteed to receive 97822. Uh, I said that explain for what it's worth. I mean, a rule's a rule in the middle of an exam. Adding, subtracting, the idea of subtracting the premium in the middle of an exam, you don't want to be thinking it through, it should be automatic. Uh, the reason is, though, you see, at the moment, one pound will buy one dollar fifty-three. In three months' time, they're forecasting that one pound will only buy one dollar fifty-two. If the pound's buying fewer dollars, it means the dollar's getting stronger. The stronger the dollar is, the fewer dollars one pound will buy. And so, because on these forecasts, if you like, we're showing a stronger dollar, they're quoting the dollar at a premium. So that's the logic, but I'm afraid a rules rule, we subtract a premium. However, still on the same idea, um, you know, here we subtracted the difference 
There can be other occasions where you need to add. Well, again, it depends on the quote. Look at example five. We're going to pay 200,000 in two months. Again, we know the spot rate. Uh, 1.6582 to 1.6623. Uh, the two month forward, again, is given us a difference. Uh, it's in cents. I said it's always in the lower currency, so even though the C isn't there, the difference is 0 0.0083 to 0 0.0092. But this time, it says against it, dis. Dis stands for discount. Well, the logic's the opposite with premium, but in the middle of an exam, I always think, well, normally with discount we would subtract, but no, if it's quoted at a discount, you add a discount to the spot to get the forward rate. So the actual forward rate here, adding these differences, comes to 1.6665 to 1.6715. You add a discount, you subtract a premium. Uh, now we can convert. We're paying. It was $200,000. Because there are $1.6 equals one pound, we'll divide by the rate. And by now it should be getting automatic. But which rate? Well, if we're in the UK, since we're paying dollars, we need to buy dollars, the first currency. Uh, and if we're buying, we use the first, the lower rate, 665. Uh, which means the cost in pounds is one two zero zero one two. So that's uh, uh, the pound the pounds that we'll end up spending, and again it's fixed in two months. No money changes hands today. Today we just agree the rate. It's in two months' time that the money passes. But instead of uh, waiting to see what spot is, it's guaranteed to be 120,012. Okay, uh, now I've already said, in fact, usually these days the current examiner quotes the forward rates directly rather than this premium discount. But because that's what happens in the papers, just in case he throws it in, uh, no big problem. Okay, so that's the first way, I hope, a very easy way once we've sorted out how we deal with exchange rates. I'll keep each one separate, so we'll stop this lecture here. In the next one, we'll look at something called money market hedging.